Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Suhini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. For everyone who's tuning in for the first time, this is the channel where we talk about anything and everything AI. Now, typically I have been publishing a lot of videos on computer vision, uh, UNET, segmentation, bounding box detections and so on and so forth. But for the past few months, I have been actually been working on natural language processing where it is you know, not to do anything with vision anymore, but specifically looking at text and how do how how would you go about you know analyzing text uh, per se? So today I am releasing code along with you know initial description for natural language processing. So if you know this uh, video would be something about you know beginner to intermediate level of uh, expertise, and the goal behind it is for you to understand what natural language processing is. What are the different use cases? And the code that I'm going to be releasing is actually very specific to resume screening. So think about it. Whenever you create your resume, you may not hear back from, you know, automated uh, search engines or by, you know, automated resumes or, or bots. And the reason for that is because they look for very specific skills and their proficiencies. And if that match is not found, then your resume is just, you know, screened out or passed. So today, the code that I'm going to be releasing is going to show you how your skills are essentially used in order to classify if you qualify for a particular role or not. If this is interesting you to you, please do subscribe and hit the like button. Let's get started. So let's get started with what natural language processing is and what are typical use cases for NLP. Now, natural language processing is the combination of natural language understanding and natural language generation, or NLU and NLG. And if you go about the, by the definition, NLP is the ability of a computer program to understand human language as it is spoken or written, and it is referred to as you know, natural language. And this is definitely a component of artificial intelligence. So think about it, whenever there is text that is written or whenever there is a need for text to be generated, all of this is under comes under the umbrella of natural language processing. If we take a very simple example, whenever you are talking to your smartphone for an inquiry, so this process where your, your voice is first transcribed as text, and then this text, the context behind it is understood, that becomes natural language understanding. And once a, a response is generated and that response is then read out, then that becomes natural language generation. So this whole cycle, whenever you ask maybe Alexa or Siri a question, and whenever that response comes to you, it's actually a combination of NLU plus NLG. Now let's look at some of the examples of NLP, NLU, and NLG. So if we were to look at just NLP, natural language processing, some of the typical use cases that come up from it is named entity recognition. What that means is let's say you have a paragraph and you are interested in figuring out who, what, when, why, right? So in order to do that, whenever, let's say, uh, you know, the nouns or the, or the pronouns or the locations, so all of these can be detected automatically and then those become named entities. So important words or named entities in these cases. And this is just a very simple example in English, but if now you, you are looking for very specific technical terms, then these technical terms become your you know, named entities. Or if you're looking for biomedical jargons, so very specific biomedical terms, they are called your named entities. Then there is part of speech tagging. If you are interested in knowing what is the subject, what is the predicate, then there is a syntactic parsing. So whenever you are trying to understand the syntax and you know, you're know you extracting, parsing means putting every single token or putting every single word or you know important aspects of the sentence, separating them out. Whenever you are trying to do language to language model, so English to Spanish translation, you know, or uh, you know, Spanish to, to Hindi translation. So all of these uh, different kinds of translations, you definitely need the underlying uh, algorithms for natural language processing. Then there is NLU, natural language understanding, where you're not really generating any, any outcome off of, off of it, but your goal is just to understand what this question is, because it could be a very layered or very nuanced or a complicated um, you know, text 
to understand. So lexical ambiguity analysis, sentiment analysis, topic classifications, these are very common examples of natural language understanding where you know you have these online reviews maybe off of Amazon and you're just trying to figure out, you know, is this a positive review or is it a negative review? Because words themselves can sometimes be biased. You know, if I like a product, I may say great, but if I didn't like it, I could also say huh, great. So just uh, an exclamation at the end of the word great can actually change the context. So understanding these is becomes super relevant whenever you are trying to, you know, recommend. So NLU becomes a background of most recommendation engines, specifically for your e-commerce. Entity detection summarization is definitely another aspect of NLU where you may have like a huge uh, you know, write-up. You're just trying to summarize what happened. So it's it could be question answering, it could be just you know, content summarization, but you know that is definitely uh, a big aspect of NLU. And then let's look at NLG. So whenever you are trying to generate text, so let's say that now you understand the context. So the summary has been created, but now you want to generate some text corresponding to, you know, uh, whatever understanding has been, you know, achieved. So whenever you're talking about sentence generation, realization, or, you know, question answering. So whenever you ask a question to Alexa or Siri and, or, or Google, and they are giving you the, the response, then that aspect is always natural language generation. So let's look at some you know, typical use cases of NLU. Again, this is the virtual assistant conversation with the automated responses. So how is the automated system understanding what you really mean? So in these cases, uh, it is actually you know, a typical, uh, just the understanding of it is NLU, but when the response comes back, then that is NLG. Um, recommendation engine, like I said, so any recommendation in engine, so any anything to do with, you know, digital platforms, wherever there is products, surveys, reviews, um, it definitely is a use case of NLU. And then if you are doing automated service, you know, ticket resolution. So if you are working in your workspace and, um, you know, there are these tickets that automatically get generated. So, so there is an you know, online system that's already saying that you know, these are the people who are going to be helping you. So this automated uh, you know, process happens with regards to NLU. And then there is, uh, you know, things like marketing. So the automated marketing, automated campaign designing, or even, you know, candidate resume screening is a typical example of NLU, where it is, where the goal is just to take your resume or just to take, you know, background information that has been generated. And based off of that, trying to classify if you belong to a particular job or not, you know, a particular deal, should that belong to a particular marketing campaign or not. So automated lead generation, anything to do with, you know, automated campaign design is a typical use case of NLU. So this is the GitHub link that I will be, you know, releasing along with this uh, video. And this is, you know, contains all of the code that is used to generate, uh, you know, resume screening using natural language processing. And in order to access this, all you need to do is just double click on open in Colab and just open the link in a new tab. Now I already have it. And once you have opened this uh, particular code, all you need to do is save a copy in your drive. So please do not run this code directly from its place because it's in my account. So you you'll need to save a copy in Drive and then you're free to run it. Now, this data is, um, you know, this whole exercise is based off of this data set, which is available from Kaggle. So all the links are available to you. And here is where all of my, my, my data is saved. And this is the data set that I'm going to be using. It's called updated resume uh, data set. And if you want to access this, uh, you know, data set and, you know, clone it for yourself, you just need to go on this particular link and just click that, right? So you'll be able to, uh, you know, download the data set directly from Kegel. So once all of this is done, once the, you know, the Google Drive is mounted and the data set is visible to you, Let's start by looking at you know, what this data set contains. So this is what the data looks like. So these are different categories of job postings and from the resumes, so these are the specific skills that have you know, come across. So let's just take a look at a particular, uh, you know, at a particular resume. So I am interested in looking at a resume for the first 
for the first entry. So here you see the skills, the, the programming languages um, are, are, are mentioned along with um, you know, any of the methods that the person has, has you know, taken a, a look at. Um, again, open CV, deep understanding of deep learning. So it's, you can think about this, uh, everything that is in this resume column as a crunched up version of everything that comes in a person's resume, right? So this is the category of the job this person has applied to. And this would be a typical resume, you know, all, all of the contents from a resume. Now let's do some exploratory data analysis. So whenever you get any, you know, new data set for the first time, you should always do an exploratory data analysis. So what this is doing is this is looking at the number of job IDs, the different kinds of jobs uh, that, you know, people have applied for and, you know, the number of, of, of people that who have applied to that particular job. So Java developer, there are 84 applicants. And again, ideally, if you, if you're working on, on, you know, data that is distributed in, in so many different kinds of categories, you should definitely also look at the pie plot. So pie chart is going to give you the percentage distribution. So this is the bar chart is just giving you the numbers. So the pie plot will give you the percentages. And if you see, there is not really one category that is more defined than the others. So once you have that, now you need to do some pre-processing. And this pre-processing is specific to natural language processing. So that's the reason why we need to look at it very specifically. First off, what we need to do is, as you saw uh, when, I, when I showed you, you know, whatever goes into this resume, there are a lot of things that is crunched up, right? So there is a skills, um, there, are, there are sentences, there are uh, you know, experiences, understandings, everything put in, you know, in, in the same format. And also the fact that you'll see that you have you know, commas uh, along with dashes, so your you know, notations need to be consistent. And finally, you will see that there are some uh, entries that have you know, caps or capital letters such as you know SVM or uh, you know knife base. So in these cases, if the best idea is to ensure that your sentence ending is is captured, and then all of the words they are you know they are in small letters so that it is consistent across all of the different resumes, right? So because one person could have this SVM in caps, and one person could not have SVM in caps. So that's the reason why making sure all of the letters are you know caps to to make make it you know to small letters is, is a better uh, you know, way to approach homogeneity in, in data sets. You know, it's just using uh, you know, regex and using the regex, it is cleaning all of, the, all of the resume. So once you run it, so this was the original resume and this would be the clean resume. So let's just take a look at what this becomes right now. So let's uh, look at DF uh, clean. Let's look at the zeroth column. So now you see the skills programming languages, Python, pandas. You see all of the all of the punctuation marks have now been removed, and now you see uh, all of them are you know homogeneous. So the for the first letter is in caps, and the rest of all of the letters are in you know small. So this way you see that you know there is a homogeneity in you know most of the text that is coming across. So essentially now you know you will not be using the resume uh, column anymore, but you're actually going to be using a cleaned column. And then there is this, uh, th this idea of tokenizing. What tokenizing means is when you take all of the, all of the words in this particular paragraph and you, and you essentially you're breaking them up into different words and every single word is now called a token. Now this becomes significant in, in technical terms whenever there are combination of words that can be one token. For instance, if you're looking at um, you know, big data processing or, or big data, big data, the whole thing together is actually one word. So big and data specifically, separately in English, if you just consider you know, English-based tokenizing, they will be two separate words. But if you just consider technical tokenizing, then they should be considered as one word. So this is essentially what it is doing is it's is, you know, extra extracting tokenized formats for each and every one of the words. And now, again, uh, as you had seen pr priorly, all of the words were, you know, the first letter was capital and then everything was small. In order to make it homogenous, now we have, you know, combined everything and made everything as small letters. So now if we take a look at the, at the new, uh, you know, the, this is the clean ca category, 
what we are now doing is we are label encoding so that every single category is assigned a particular uh, id right and finally we are vectorizing the the cleaned column so what that means is uh, you know the, this this resume this cleaned column that that you have uh, you know identified now there needs to be a vector corresponding to every single resume so think about it if you are a candidate and you have applied towards a particular role the all of the content in your resume can be combined to generate one vector in this case you you would get like a 1500 dimensional space uh, embedding so think about it is all of these words put together now you are generating a high dimensional position vector corresponding to every single combination of words now the problem becomes relatively simple right so you have a 962 rows and 1500 you know columns all you want to do is if you have a training data set where you know that this is a resume that you know applied for this particular uh, job you for a test data set can you do the same can you extract can you just look at a vector and uh, predict what particular job role this person should be applying for right so an automated system in this way it would try to figure out that if this is this is your your resume you should apply for either a data scientist role or an advocate role or a big data engineer role and if you had applied for something else it would you know simply say that you know your resume is not applicable So first off is uh, you know the the process after this is very straightforward machine learning so you take the whole data set and you divide it into you know 80 20 split so 80% of the data is used for training and 20% is used for testing and in every single one of these case the training and the test data have a 1500 dimensional vector column and then um, once you have that then we are using a one versus rest classifier because it's a multi class classification right so it's not binary classification or not even three or four it's multi class you have a, a lot of categories of job ids that you know people are applying to so that's why we are doing one versus all and in this case we're using a k nearest neighbor class fire and all we are trying to do is we are trying to predict that for the you know remaining 20% Uh, can you predict what particular job this person should be applicable for so in this case as you can see uh, you you can get uh, as much as uh, you know 98% accuracy uh, for your training data and your valid validation data has your 96% accuracy and if you do the same you know classification report on your on your you know test data you get almost 100% accuracy right so the all this means is if you know what your you know resume if you have vectorized your your resume in the proper way and if you know so if, if an automated you know resume screener is already trained on resumes and what kind of job ids people have applied for in the past based off of that it will take any new resume and it will try to predict what this person should be applying for and if it is not in the in the, in the same genre it's going to just drop your resume and you know move on to the next candidate so this would be a very simple stick and uh, you know rudimentary uh, you know resume screening algorithm and in this case uh, you know we go a step further in order to taking a look at every single resume or every single job um, your job index and trying to take a look at what are the top words top keywords that should be highlighted in your resume so that you know your your resume stands out so because if you think about it most of the resume screening algorithms they look at word frequency they don't really look into the word context as much as word frequency what that means is let's say that you are applying for a data scientist role so if in your experiences you have this word data science data science or data scientist uh, you know data cleaning multiple times then these automated systems will actually find these and say that yes you have significant experience about data science and like i mentioned so in in most of these cases you go by the number of frequency so you see the frequency of words such as project experience is the highest and then as you you know keep your your slope is going down so like a you know words like customer or developer or server they are seen very few number of times so this is across all of the technical resumes that were screened this was just the word frequency that was coming at so now if we had to take a look at all these technical resume and create a word cloud out of the top 100 words so what would they be so uh, in this case the top 100 words would be experience month months company description skills details when you are fine tuning your resume 
make sure you have these words included as many number of times as possible so that again an automated system is able to and you know is, is able to let your resume pass through to a human person before an automated triage happens right i hope you found this useful and in the next session we are going to be looking at a much more sophisticated natural language processing system thank you and see you next time